Welcome to the Elizabeth A. Sackler Center for Feminist Art. I am Elizabeth Sackler, and it is a pleasure to be here. I hope you all had a wonderful summer. I did. And uh, this autumnal weather, I think we're in Indian summer. Um, this is our first program of the season that I've had an opportunity to come and introduce our speaker. And I'm particularly excited about that today. Um, as many of you know, the Elizabeth A. Sackler Center for Feminist Art is an exhibition space, of course, with the permanent house of uh, the Dinner Party by Judy Chicago. We are an education facility dedicated to feminist art. And our mission for three and a half years now has been to raise awareness of feminism's cultural contributions. We host lectures, discussions on feminist art, feminist theory, and feminist activism. And since our inception, we've hosted scores, I think we must be going on hundreds at this point, of excellent and wide-ranging programming. Today is the uh, first lecture, as I said, that I've had the pleasure to introduce. Um, and it is to introduce my friend, my very good friend, Mary Beckinsale. Uh, I met Mary in Florence, uh, in Italy, obviously, in 2004. And we were randomly seated as luncheon partners uh, in a room that held more than 40 people. And we immediately discovered our shared passion about the then contemporary political horrors, our rage at unethical behavior, and our tendencies for provocative social activism. And of course, our love of all things feminist and of art. And our relationship has grown and deepened over the years. And I'm an enormous fan of Mary Beckinsale and of my painting maestro, her husband, Jules Madoff, uh, and their wonderful institution in Florence, the Studio Art Centers International. Mary and I have been discussing what makes, what means feminist art for a couple of years now. And there is no one better equipped than I would call her Encyclopedia Beckinsale to reinterpret major works of art throughout history by identifying their feminist content. And this is what she has taken on uh, for this lecture. And she's moving beyond traditional analysis and uh, recasting these works uh, in this new and in this scholarly light. Um, there are only a handful of people with the knowledge and brilliance of mind uh, this requires. And Mary is in the company of our beloved Linda Nochlin and uh, Lucy Lepard. And let me read you uh, a brief bio, uh, which does not include a myriad of things. Mary Beckinsale, internationally recognized art educator and art historian, is president of Studio Art Centers International. Since 1993, Saatchi has been affiliated with Bowling Green State University and is one of the premier study abroad institutions in Italy and worldwide. Under uh, Dr. Beckinsale's leadership, enrollment has grown to over 100 to 200 students each semester with 80% of Saatchi students coming from American universities. The program draws upon the rich past of Florence, plus its resources in museums, architecture, art specialists, and wide cultural offerings, while concurrently presenting contemporary developments in Italian art and culture. Um, I would like to say also that when I met uh, Mary and Jules, um, it was as if, I don't know, our molecules immediately wed. And since uh, I'm trying to think what year we started it, but there is an Elizabeth A. Sackler um, uh, um, Saatchi, um, what is it? Thank you, scholarship, um, which is, uh, provides a, a young woman student artist to come and uh, supports her 
uh, at Saatchi uh, and the year in Florence, which has been uh, a wonderful thing, and I'm delighted to have done that. Um, Mary received a degree in art history from Cambridge University and a master's degree in philosophy from the Warburg Institute in London in 1968 with a thesis on the conquest of Me Mexico. It was in those years that she had the good fortune to study with some of the greatest intellectuals of the last century, including Michael Jaffe, Ernst Gombrich, Michael Bra is it Baxendahl? Probably I should know who this is, so that's an embarrassment to me, and Otto Kutz. Later, she received a two-year Levenholm scholarship to continue her research in Spain, but those were the years of Franco's dictatorship, and that experience changed her life. On returning to England, she wanted to help social justice and taught in high schools in the north of England. These were the years of feminism and social change. Oxford and Cambridge colleges opened their doors to women, and women began to win greater social rights. I think Mary will tell you, I will ask her to tell you how many men there were when she was there and how many women. So maybe you could just include that little piece of historic information, because it tells those who might not be aware of what we have accomplished over the last 40 years, what we have accomplished over the last 40 years. She later moved to Florence, where she became dean at Saatchi, working with Jules Madoff, the painter-artist who founded Saatchi in 1975 and whom she married. In August 2010, this past August, uh, Mary Beckinsale was awarded an honorary degree from BGSU. So uh, that is a wonderful opportunity. Um, it is a real pleasure for me to welcome Mary uh, to this side of the Atlantic and to thank her for coming to point out how we have been trained to see art and to suggest how we can refresh our personal lenses as we approach art in whatever physical context we see it, whether it's museums, galleries, or other. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Mary Beckinsale. Well, I hope I live up to that extremely um, enchanting introduction. And obviously, first of all, I want to thank Elizabeth for inviting me to talk at the center, but also to the Brooklyn Museum for giving me this possibility of talking to you. So today, what I really, what, this lecture grew out of a discussion that I had over two years with Elizabeth, which is what is feminist art? Is it art that is produced by women, or is it actually the content is it actually the content of the work that should be feminist or not feminist? And on that channel, challenge, I thought, well, as an art historian, as a trained art historian, I'm going to look back into the past, into the iconic pieces that we know from the past, and say which of these are actually indisputably feminist. And there are a lot of pieces that, you know, you can argue one way or the other. A piece like uh, the Judith of Holofernes by Artemisia Jezebel, you know, you can't completely take that with you. But I, so I decided I would select four and see what happened selecting four. So it's a sort of experiment that I went through. And if any of you are art historians or teachers, it's an experiment you might try for yourselves to actually, you know, look back over the work you love and see if any of them are actually feminist in content. Do come and sit down. There's lots of seats. So that's where I started from. But before I actually go through the four pieces that I selected and worked on, and I have to say that in this instance, my definition of feminism is the simplest one, all right? It's the idea that a work of art could portray the power, the independence, equality, dignity, and identity of women. But before actually starting on those four, I want to go through a few other images just to put you into a sort of context. Now, the oldest artworks that have been found anywhere in the world are these artworks that come from the Paleolithic or the Neolithic. And they're so-called Venuses, and they actually date from as far back as 35,000 years ago. 
And the first Venus of this kind was found in the Dordogne over a century ago, and it's related to the artwork of the Cro-Magnon. Now, more than a hundred of these pieces have been found, and they're steadily being more and more are being dug up. And they, they range from very tiny, like little charms that you would wear on a necklace, to actually the Willendorf um, Venus, which uh, this one is, that was found in um, in 2009. Wait a minute. Wait a moment. Let me find it. Let me see if which one we are talking about. This one here. Excuse me. This is the one they've just recently found. And when they found it, it was broken into six pieces. It was found in the headwaters of the Danube last year. And they restored it and put it back together. And it must have taken hundreds of hours to carve this.